We are glad to welcome you to our channel. Kindly subscribe to our channel and share our videos with your friends and relations. And click on the bell icon for instant notification whenever new videos are uploaded on this channel. Rest assured that we are going to have a very exciting and inspiring discussion. Let's dive into the lesson right away. Hello, friends. Welcome to today's IELTS essay writing lesson. In today's video, we are going to look at how to write a great opinion essay for IELTS. If you are preparing to sit for the IELTS test, this video is for you. If you are going to uh, write any uh, English exam, you are going to sit for any English exam, in which you are expected to write an essay in order to score high in that exam. Certainly, this video is for you. Uh, we are going to take an IELTS essay writing question prompt, and I'm going to give you a sample essay in response to the question. And I'm going to show you step by step how you can write a great opinion essay that will enable you to score high in the IELTS test. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Of course, if you are interested in regularly uh, watching videos like this, you need to click on the bell icon as well so that whenever a new video goes live on this channel, you will be notified instantly. This is English Classes Online, and as usual, I am your host, Benjamin. Let's dive right into the lesson. How to write a great opinion essay for IELTS. That is the focus of this lesson. Let's uh, begin with the first step, and that is understanding the prompt. You need to understand the prompt before you are able to write a great essay. Now, how do you understand the prompt? Read the prompt carefully. This is very important. You need to begin by thoroughly reading the prompt to understand the task. If you don't understand the task or what you are asked to write, then you, you will write the if you understand what you are asked to write, then you'll be able to handle it well. So pay attention to the topic, the question, and any specific instructions. Next, you need to identify keywords. This is very important. Identify keywords of phrases that indicate the type of essay that you are expected to write, such as discuss, argue, or compare. If you are asked to discuss and you begin to argue, you will lose marks. If you are asked to argue and you begin to compare, you will lose marks. If you are asked to compare and you simply discuss, you will lose marks. So identify the keywords that indicate the type of essay you are asked to write. Now, the next thing is to think critically, uh, analyze the prompt to form an initial opinion, consider different perspectives and potential arguments that you can use in your essay. Now, this is part of the planning uh, stage of your essay. You need to prepare before you write. Leap, uh, if you leap before you look, you might uh, get into trouble. But if you look before you leap, then you, you, you will uh, have a safe landing. Now, moving further, we come to brainstorming and outlining. Of course, we, we have already looked at uh, the first step to take, which is uh, 
understanding the prompt. Once you have understood the prompt, the next thing is to brainstorm and outline. And there are four things you need to do here. Gather ideas, organize ideas, develop arguments, and create an outline. Talking about gathering ideas, you need to generate a list of ideas related to the prompt. You can use mind maps, lists of free writing to explore your thoughts. You know, writing can be divided into three main stages, pre-writing, writing, writing, and rewriting. These brainstorming and outlining belong to the pre-writing stage where you gather your ideas in preparation for the essay. After gathering your ideas, you organize your ideas. What do you do? Organize your ideas into a logical structure. This can help you to develop a clear and coherent argument. This is very important. Gather your ideas, organize your ideas, then develop arguments. You need to expand your ideas into arguments that support your opinion. Each argument should have clear evidence and reasoning. Then the fourth one, create an outline. When you have gathered ideas, organized ideas, and developed arguments, then you use all these to create an outline. Construct an outline with a clear introduction, body paragraphs, and conclusion. This provides a framework for your essay, all right? An outline is a list of the main ideas or the key points you are going to use in writing your essay. And once you have created your outline, then you are fully equipped to uh, begin to do something about writing a great essay. But then there's one point you should not omit, and that is developing a strong thesis statement. A thesis statement is the main idea or the central argument that you, you, you want to make in the entire essay. Your, your viewpoint in the entire essay is your strong thesis statement. Now, your thesis statement for it to be strong must be clear and concise. Uh, the thesis statement should clearly state your main argument or opinion. It should be a single sentence that summarizes the essay's main point. Then it should be specific and focused. You need to avoid making broad generalizations. On the contrary, you need to focus your thesis statement on a specific aspect of the prompt. Then. It should be debatable and interesting. Your thesis statement should be something that can be argued or debated. It should also be something that is interesting and engaging to the reader. And finally, you need to locate, or I mean, you need to situate your thesis statement in the introduction, which is the first paragraph. This is important. The thesis statement is typically placed at the end of the introduc introduction paragraph or introductory paragraph, if you like, uh, providing a clear direction for the essay's argument. So you need to develop a strong thesis statement. That's another important arg argument that is central to writing a great opinion essay for IELTS. Now we come to the next point, which is structuring the essay. Uh, number one, you need to begin with an introduction. An essay, a good essay has a definite structure. You should have an introduction. You should have body paragraphs and you should have conclusion. Talking about the introduction, you need to start with a hook that grabs the reader's attention introduce the topic and provide background information, then end with your thesis statement. The second part of your essay is the body paragraphs. Each body paragraph should present a separate argument that supports your thesis statement, provide evidence and examples to illustrate your points. Then the conclusion is the third part of your essay this is where you restate your thesis statement and summarize your main points. You need to end with a concluding statement that leaves a lasting impression on the reader. 
Then supporting your opinion with evidence. This is another vital point uh, in writing a great opinion essay. Your opinion must be supported with evidence. How do you do it? Real life examples. Use personal experiences, anecdotes, or current events to illustrate your points. Statistics and data. Provide relevant statistical data or research, research findings to support your claims. These are very important. Expert opinions. Quote experts in the field or cite relevant research studies to strengthen your arguments. For example, if you are writing a, an article or an, a, an opinion essay that has to do with a particular topic, then you quote uh, an expert. You, you, you restate what an expert in that particular topic has said about it. And that actually strengthens your argument, expert opinions, We're talking about quotations or adages or sayings. The next is logical reasoning. Use logic and reasoning to connect your ideas and present a persuasive argument. This is important. Next, addressing counter arguments. When you are expressing your opinion, you know that opinions are diverse on a given subject. So when you are expressing a, a, a particular opinion, there are other people who have opposing or opinions or counter arguments. So you need to address these things to uh, make your own uh, presentation quite convincing. Now, how do you do it? First, acknowledge counter arguments. You need to briefly mention opposing viewpoints or counter arguments to demonstrate that you have considered all sides of the issue. For example, if you are uh, if you are expressing the opinion that uh, it is good or proper to ban smoking in public places, for example, you need to you know acknowledge the view of opposite uh, of uh, of your opponents who may say that you know people who want to smoke have the right to smoke and should not uh, be stopped from smoking, you will acknowledge it and say, well, although many people uh, claim that smoking should not be banned in public places because it is the right of individuals who have chosen to smoke. However, uh, it should be noted that the right of the individual to smoke or their choice to smoke should not be allowed to jeopardize the health of members of the public because the moment they are allowed to smoke in public, then that their choice of habit then becomes a trap to others, other members of the, of the public. So you counter their arguments, okay? So, but the first thing is to acknowledge the argument. Then the second thing is to refute the argument. We call this uh, demolition. You demolish their claim, okay? Now, you need to provide evidence or reasoning to refute or challenge opposing viewpoints. You need to show why your perspective is stronger, you know? As I have already uh, given an example, although it is the right of an individual who has chosen to smoke, however, uh, uh, it is wrong to say that anyone who has chosen to smoke should smoke in public when in actual fact, the smoke that he exhales from from his uh, his uh, his mouth and nose will affect the health 
of people that are close to him, either in the office, in a restaurant, in a restaurant, or any other public place. So you acknowledge the argument and say, yes, fine. They have chosen to smoke and it is their right to go with their choice. However, they shouldn't be allowed to do that in public, thereby jeopardizing the health of others. Now, you need to maintain objectivity. That's another important way to address counter arguments. You need to present counter arguments fairly and objectively. You need to accept what is right. For example, you need to accept that uh, those who have chosen to smoke, it is their personal business. It is their choice and probably their right to do so. However, it, this right should not be used to destroy other people's right to safety in a public place. Now, avoid dismissing uh, opposing arguments outright or using inflammatory language. You know, when you are expressing your opinion, you don't need to uh, blackmail any other person who holds an op uh, uh, opposing opinion. You need to acknowledge that every, every other person has the right to hold an opinion. Your duty is to show that your own opinion is the correct one. Then strengthen your argument. Addressing counter arguments demonstrates critical thinking and strengthens your own position by showing that you have considered alternative viewpoints. You acknowledge what is right and then you demolish what is wrong, okay? So that is the way to strengthen your argument. Then moving further, we look at our conclusion and final thoughts. You need to restate your thesis because your thesis is your, is your main opinion. That is your central argument and that is the main message you want to convey to your audience. So you need to restate it. Restate your thesis statement in a new way, thereby emphasizing your main argument. You know, take your uh, thesis statement and then present it in a new, in a very fresh way, uh, you know, that will further strengthen your argument. Then summarize your main points. This is important. Those key points that help to consolidate your position, you summarize them as briefly as possible. Briefly summarize the key arguments presented in your body paragraphs, and then the third one, leave a lasting impression. End with a concluding statement that leaves a lasting impression on the reader. This could be a call to action, a thought-provoking question, or a final reflection on the topic. Now, having looked at all this, uh, I'm now going to give you a sample essay, but I will first show you the steps you need to take. Step one, introduction. What should you do in your introduction? Let's use this uh, question, IELTS question prompt to demonstrate the steps that you can take. Now, it follows some some business prohibit smoking in any of their offices. Some governments have banned smoking in all public places. These are general statements that provide you with the background information for your essay. Do you agree or disagree? Now, this aspect of the prompt is asking for your opinion. Now, what do you do in, you know, uh, getting your introduction. The first thing you do is to paraphrase the general statements. All right? Now, the general statements, as I have shown you, some business prohibits smoking in any of their offices. Some governments have banned smoking in all public places. To paraphrase means to restate these, uh, these, these ideas in your own words, you know? using your own words, not the exact words of the writer. You may pick some key words there that you cannot change, but replace some that should be replaced. For example, we can paraphrase the above general statements in the following way. 
smoking in the workplace is considered an offense in some companies whose action is in agreement with the law in certain countries where it has become illegal to smoke in public. You see, we have made these two sentences that stated uh, the background information. We have made them into one. Then the second thing we need to do is to use the, uh, the aspect of the question that is asking for our opinion and then start to it by giving your opinion. For example, in my opinion, I agree that banning public smoking is necessary in view of its serious negative health and social consequences. You see, you, you have actually given your opinion and by giving your opinion, you have also stated your thesis and you have, you have given you have enumerated two key points that you are going to use in developing the body paragraphs. This is really important. So if you're able to take this step one and then, then you get your introduction, it's very simple once you understand that. And then we put these two together to form our introduction. Our paraphrased statements and our opinion that we have derived from the, the question that asks for our opinion. Do you agree or disagree? And we say, I agree, okay? We put the two together and this is the introduction in full. You see, the two are together. Smoking in the workplace is considered an offense in some companies whose action is in agreement with the law in certain countries where it has become illegal to smoke in public. In my opinion, I agree that banning public smoking is necessary in view of its serious negative health and social consequences. Now, this is your introduction. And this brings us to step two, which is the body paragraphs. What do you do? Now, you develop the two points you stated in your opinion, why smoking should be banned in public places. The first reason is serious negative health consequences. So this is how we, 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 we develop our first, our second paragraph, which is the first paragraph in our body, in the body of our essay. Smoking in offices and other public places undoubtedly has serious negative health consequences on both the smoker and other people who may be close enough to inhale the smoke. You see, this is our topic sentence. We have stated categorically that banning smoking in public places is, is proper. And we have stated the reason because it has serious negative health consequences on other members of the public. Now let's continue. Although smoking could be viewed as a personal choice on the part of the smoker, doing it in public is no longer personal as his behavior affects the health of others. You can see how we mentioned the counter argument, the view of the opposition. They claim that, you know, uh, smoking is a personal choice on the part of the smoker and he should be allowed to make his choice. This is fundamental human right. We say, agreed, this is correct. But when he is doing it in public, it is no longer a personal choice because his behavior affects the health of others. You see, then we summarize this paragraph by saying, certainly it is improper to subject the health of the majority of people to danger simply because of the freedom and pleasure of individuals who may choose to smoke in spite of its harmful effects. See, we have reached, we have drawn a conclusion. Then, Point number two, social implications. 
social implications, the social implications of allowing smoking in public. Moreover, most people find the smell of cigarettes very unpleasant and disgusting. Experience has shown that people often notice the smell of cigarettes on their clothes and hair after spending some time in bars or offices that permit smoking. See, you have given a clear reason, you know? Now, you, you start with the topic sentence. Most people find the smell of cigarettes very unpleasant and disgusting. And then their experience. Next, in some, in some cases, the affected clothes may continue to smell like cigarette smoke several days later. To people who hate the smell of cigarettes, this can be quite embarrassing. Therefore, there is nothing wrong for business owners and governments to prohibit public smoking in the interest of members of the public who may be allergic to smoking. See, we have drawn a very clear conclusion in this, in this last sentence in this paragraph. We have discussed the social implications. Now, one thing about developing your or writing your body paragraphs is that you should follow the principle of paragraphing. Take one main idea or one key point, discuss it in one paragraph, take another key point, discuss it in the second paragraph. This is important. And so when we put the two together, that forms our body paragraphs. We have two paragraphs here, okay? Smoking in public places, uh, smoking in offices and other public places undoubtedly has serious negative health consequences uh, on both the smoker and other people who may be close enough to inhale the smoke. Although smoking could be viewed as a personal choice on the part of the smoker, doing it in public is no longer personal as this behavior affects the health of others. Certainly, it is improper to subject the health of the majority of people to danger simply because of the freedom and pleasure of individuals who may choose to smoke in spite of its harmful effects. Moreover, most people find the smell of cigarettes very unpleasant and disgusting Experience has shown that people often notice the smell of cigarettes on their clothes and hair after spending some time in bars or offices that permit smoking. In some cases, the affected clothes may continue to smell like smoke, uh, smoke or cigarette smoke several days later. To people who hate the smell of cigarettes, this can be quite embarrassing. Therefore, there is nothing wrong for, businesses, for business owners and governments to prohibit public smoking in the interest of members of the public who may be allergic to smoking. So these are your body paragraphs. Now, conclusion, our step three is how to write your conclusion. Number one, rewrite the general statement. The general statement we have already given is that smoking in the public in the workplace is considered an offense in some companies whose action is in agreement with the law in certain countries where it has become illegal to smoke in public. You are not going to uh, bring this exactly as it is in the introduction. Uh, you, you are not supposed to lift it exactly from the introduction and 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 uh, put it in the in the conclusion. No, you need to rewrite it. And I'm going to show you how. The second step in getting your conclusion is to reemphasize your opinion. And our opinion is this, which we already have in our introduction. In my opinion, I agree that banning public smoking is necessary in view of its serious negative health and social consequences. 
Now, these are your key points and you, you should conclude with them. You started with them and you should conclude with them, but you need to refine them, restate them, okay? Re-emphasize them. Now, this is how we can uh, present these two aspects, the general statements rewritten in, in a new way and then you, the, your opinion restated or re-emphasized. In view of the above undeniable facts, I believe that companies and governments who have prohibited public smoking have acted in public interest. As far as I am concerned, public smoking not only constitutes a nuisance, but also poses great danger to public health. You see, you have restated exactly the key points you made in your, in your introductory paragraph. You have restated them in the conclusion, in the, in the last paragraph, without uh, using the same words. So having seen the three steps you need to take, let me now show you the sample essay, what it should look like. Uh, but before that, I want us to look at the question once again. Some business prohibit smoking in any of their offices. Some governments have banned smoking in all public places. Do you agree or disagree? Now, this is what your answer should look like. First paragraph. Then the second paragraph is the beginning. In the first paragraph, you you have uh, you start with the paraphrased general statement and then you give your opinion. Smoking in the workplace is considered an offense in some companies whose action is in agreement with the law in certain countries where it has become illegal to smoke in public. In my opinion, I agree that banning public smoking is necessary in view of its serious negative health and social consequences. Now, in the body of your essay, you are going to discuss two key reasons why smoking should be banned in public. And the first is negative health consequences and negative social consequences. So, and that is exactly, you discuss negative health consequences in the first uh, paragraph in the body of the essay. Then the second paragraph in the body, you discussed the social implications, okay? And then uh, this is the concluding paragraph. I have shown you what to do. The first thing is to restate the general statement. In view of the above undeniable fact, I believe that companies and governments who have prohibited public smoking have acted in public interest. You have restated the general statement. Then your opinion. As far as I am concerned, public smoking not only constitutes a nuisance, but also poses great danger to public health. You see? So you have drawn a conclusion. This is exactly how to write a great opinion essay. I have shown you exactly how to write a great opinion essay for IELTS. And uh, if you follow the steps, you will be able to write a great opinion essay for IELTS, an essay that will enable you to score high in the IELTS. This is where we draw the curtains on today's lesson. Thanks for watching and see you in the next class. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now as a way of giving us support for notification about new videos click on the bell icon you will find the bell icon click
click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be instantly notified if you have actually enjoyed the video like and share the video with your friends and relatives this is very important if you have any comments leave your comments below any questions any suggestions we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them see you in the next video i look forward to always seeing you in the new